Hello. 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 Do we know if Max or anybody else is going to join? Um, hey, I can I can ping Max and Davis. Um, okay, <laughs> I have a similar I mean, question. Would, would yeah. Rita and Alta touch join? Uh, no, uh, re, both Rita and Alta are oop, so they will not be joining. Oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Rita gave me like a an approval for like a little fix. So I was like, yay! I appreciated that. <laughs> Yeah, Rita sometimes pop in when she's off. I don't think Max is out right now, Alex. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so either. I, I, I pinged. Um, OK. Uh, if you already uh, pinged, then I won't bother. Yeah, I see It looks Davis. like Davis is joining right now. Yeah, yeah and I don't see uh, any agenda also today. So I'm not sure if we have anything to discuss. I had a question for Max. But it's not here. How about we give it a couple more minutes in the end? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Hello. Hey, Max. How's it going? Good. 
I think this is everybody we're expecting right now. Yeah, Rita said she wouldn't come. I think Sir Tesh said he was on vacation last week. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that's... Uh, I, I think you're right, then. I'm struggling to make words at 9 a.m. Uh, <laughs> I, shall I we... Should... Was it... I was I was gonna just talk to you or ask questions to you. So should I wait? Uh, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, but I you do have questions. questions. I do what? have questions. Uh, so I want to just uh, refer to the framework PR that I have opened. Uh, so I think that PR is green now. I mean, the CI is passing, uh, but I don't understand one of your comments. So I'm like curious if you can elaborate on that, where you said uh, whether we are also going to use that same provider response cache for mutation. So I'm like, a bit confused on that. Uh, sorry, can you link the, the comment in the chat? Yes, shop? yes. Just give me one. And did I also, if anyone has any agenda items, uh, feel free to add them to the doc while I'm answering this. Here it is. Let me let me create a June twenty first actually. Just you know, because in the Docker it didn't happen. Yeah, I tried to do it, but I'd have to do it as a suggestion. So it didn't make sense. Oh yeah, feel free to to do that. I don't know what happens. The no, it doesn't matter to me. That's just me, that's but... it was just a note. That's maybe why some folks didn't do it. It's just you know. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it. Uh, let's see here. So here's the comments. Loading it up. Oh gosh. Um, I'm apparently unable to click and drag on uh, non-blocking retrieval of informers. That is not the thing. Let me just do that again. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, so uh, do you know why we have the idempotent? Uh, no. I, I mean, I'd read in the comments and it said like we need it for mutation, but maybe I'm, I'm lacking some context there. Yeah, so it's a it's a convergence issue, right? So uh, for mutation, what the external data call is doing is it's taking the value at a given location in an object, mm -hmm. sending it to the external data provider uh, retrieving a new value in the response and using that to assign the uh, the the that the return value that that becomes the, the value of the object at the of the field at the destination. Sorry, good. No, no, sorry. I'm just agreeing. Uh, to... Okay, so like a, a concrete example would be let's say you have a Docker image which uses the latest tag, right? You could send the Docker image to the external data provider. The external data provider will turn that tag into a hash, right? And and re respond with that, and that would become your new <clears throat> field value, right? That that was actually the the use case the the core right. use case mutation this is designed around now the reason this makes sense is because if you were to feed that same value into external data right this this resultant value you would get the same value back Right. If that wasn't the case, if it wasn't convergence, you'd actually be in violation of Kubernetes webhook requirements for mutation webhooks, right? Which requires webhooks to be idempotent. Does that does that make sense? Yes. But what I'm what I'm trying to understand is uh, how does it uh, how this external data. I mean, 
of, uh, and for the response cache for that matter affects in the flow because as i understand it it comes after the fact or like it's come later in the flow right be it validation or mutation like webhook start processing the request and then it sends the data to external data provider so regardless for whatever it is being used for we will i mean we they will call probably external data provider and you know we will do that whole caching correct so it should be transparent to both of these operation correct so identity doesn't matter for validation whatsoever for mutation you're saying hey mutation is called at the end of the mutation cycle what does it matter if it's identity right is mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it matters because, first of all, it's a Kubernetes level requirement for mutation webhooks. That mutation webhooks be identical, right? So, this is our way of meeting that requirement. Right. Uh, and the reason why that requirement matters is because Kubernetes itself can re invoke mutation webhooks, right? They call this the re invocation policy. Um, and, and so for every request, mutation webhooks may be called more than once. Oh no, oh, my cat tried to jump on a box. Um, it's kind of messed it up. She's okay though. But now my dog and my cat are saying hi to each other. You're very sweet dog. Yeah. Um, she's checking to make sure the cat was okay. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? The, so the the mutation uh, webhook could be called more than once, right, for any given request. And even if that weren't necessarily the case, uh, Kubernetes itself is part of a, you know, it's a bunch of controller loops, right? So mm -hmm. objects get reapplied all the time. Right, so it's not a strict requirement of Kubernetes, so in my opinion, it probably should be. Um, but mutation webhooks should be um, as a collective idempotent. But right. having individual webhooks idempotent is is also intended to prevent drifts. I see. In in so, that larger time frame. Go ahead. Correct. Uh, yeah, and that. So again, like my my point is, uh, so for, for this for in this particular case, we are already setting idempotent uh, labels to true, right? And we, well, we, who's we? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. What do you mean by that? You said we are setting idempotent equals to true. Who who is setting it equal to true? The frameworks code or whatever changes you are making in the frameworks code. No, 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 no. The frameworks doesn't set idempotent. The response from the uh, from from the external data provider oh. is is what sets idempotent. So, okay. Do you have maybe I have not checked that example, but do you have any pointers as to what the well, but. Okay, I haven't seen that because uh, in the response external, I was checking the external data as uh, contracts, I guess, and I think my memory is a little fuzzy here, but I I didn't say it and I, I didn't say it. That's why I just like said it first to false and like, and then after our discussion, I said it to true. So maybe I missed uh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe there's a bug, but the intent is that the, the provider set it to true. Um, I could try to find the code in in the protocol. Uh, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll do we, that after the yeah, meeting because I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah no, What's we can we can sync offline. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, but I was like the. I think that's the only thing I didn't find, and so I was like, okay, let me just set it to false. That's that's what my initial thought was uh, in in provider response. But anyways, let's let's sync it offline. Then. Gotcha. I'll be, I'll yeah, be, yeah, it's meant to be a self attestation. I'm sorry. Hopefully that um, <laughs> that factoid clears things up a bit. Yeah, but okay. So uh, let let's consider that is coming from the provider. So let's say if I assign the value, whatever is coming from the provider, we're still be good, right? I mean, 
there is nothing uh, that cache code has to do anything else, correct? Yeah, it probably just needs to remember whether the response was idempotent or not. Um, you know, and, and whether that needs to be cached on a per object basis or if it can be cached like once per provider. Yeah, that I, I haven't thought about. Hmm? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, right now we are caching it per provider per keys, kind of. Uh, that That's our cache key right now. Yeah, and it, it might be like over caching to like, I'd have to see how the protocol is set up. Like it, um, it intuitively makes sense to me that a provider would only ever be like consistently idempotent or consistently not idempotent. But mm. if it's technically possible for idempotency to vary by key, uh, mm. you know, it might be better for the cache to reflect the possibility of that drift. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll so, also try the I'll also try the mutation example with external data provider and let's see what actually differs. Yeah, it on. should if it uh, for that example if it doesn't return idempotent that should yield an error for it during the mutation pipeline. Mm, okay. Okay. Cool. I, I'll I'll check that. Uh, the other question is, is just probably a housekeeping question, but uh, I need this in the, uh, I mean, I need this changes in the gatekeeper PR so that I've opened, right? So how do we, uh, like, I mean, how do we generally do it? Like, do we merge framework PR, cutter release, and then refer it to the gatekeeper repo? How do we do that? Uh, are you asking whether we need to cut a release or because because it doesn't need to get into frameworks before it gets into gatekeeper, right? But... Correct, correct. So I'm asking that whole process. How do we typically consume the changes in the frame, from the framework gatekeeper? Yeah, I haven't been super strict about cutting releases. Uh, I feel like Sir Tesh would be the person to have the strongest opinion there as to whether we can just go off of frameworks head or not. Um, as I said, like it does need to be merged into frameworks, right? Just otherwise the code really can't be imported, right? And it's, we're not right. going to do like a controller runtime right. fork of a repo we own. Um, so yeah, to me, the only variable is whether it gets released. Does that, I know it doesn't completely answer your question, but yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's what my basically the question was like, do we refer from master or header? <laughs> do we get a tagged release? That's it. Yeah, my, my current one course. is uh, the, the, the thing that is, is adding the validating admission policy. I think that's just going off of uh, the master branch. Okay. Okay, cool. That's right. I mean, I, I just wanted to know like what we do in general. Gotcha. I think we've done it both ways. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Let me look at the notes stock here. Okay. Identifiance discussion was added. Uh, yeah. Any other questions, thoughts? No, from that's me for now. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyone else? Andrew, did you did you wanna add something? Uh, nope, I'm I'm all good actually. The one thing I wanted to ping somebody on Rita pinged me on it last night, so hopefully hopefully we'll get that squared away before three point thirteen comes out. This is the um, PRs for uh, the library. Correct. The annotation change that got merged in the gatekeeper. I want to get the library updated as soon as possible to to match the 3.13 behavior so we can start testing it. Yeah. Uh, did, yeah. When, when can we expect Rita's and or Sertesh to, to be back? Because they're both kind of out, right? Uh, so Rita will be back by 26th. 
and sartash let me check is two weeks out but i think i can get a date very quick uh he will be yeah i think he comes maybe to july the, yeah fourth of like fifth of july or something. right fourth of july you said fifth, yeah i mean fifth. july 5th fifth of july yeah better not be back fourth of july that's a that's a holiday <laughs> Cool. Thank you. All right. Do we want to give ourselves back math? Thirty-seven minutes. Your math is amazing, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, morning math. Quick. <laughs> But yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you all. Sounds yeah. good. Bye. Bye.